All right, welcome to electrical class today, students. Today we're going to be talking about inductors and AC circuits. Now we want to give a little review. You know, earlier we did inductors and DC circuits. So let us see if we can differentiate between inductors and AC circuits and inductors and DC circuits. So this is an example of an inductor and DC circuit. You realize that it has a DC source, so you would probably just have what? 12 volts, and it would be DC volts. But it's very important that you pay attention you know, to these things, because when you're dealing with inductors and DC circuits, you don't want to confuse it with inductors and AC circuits. Now, for inductors and DC circuits, as we have learned before, you would need the rise and fall factors, you know, the rising factor and the falling factor. Um, you talk about current rising and current falling. Now we're going to be changing the source of our circuit. And we're going to be looking at inductors in AC circuits. Now when we talk about inductors in AC circuits, this is still 10 millihenry. But for AC circuits, we'll talk about it having like 110 volts. And one thing that determines that yes, you're dealing with AC, it will always give you the frequency. So this is 110 volts at 50 hertz supply. Now, when we talk about inductors in AC, then we refer to phasers. So we talk about you know, current leading or lagging. We refer to phasers. So this is where you know I will be. And then now we can say that you know I L would actually the leading, the lagging, you know, VL by an angle of 90 degrees. So that is what we would have, you know, VL, IL, you know, VL the leading, IL by an angle of 90 degrees. So, you know, we have what is called a phasor diagram. This is what is referred to as a phasor diagram. Now, as a result of this, students, then you know, this, is, this is key to your knowledge. If we should look at a resistor circuit, for argument's sake, we should look at a simple resistor circuit in AC. This is 10 volts. This is 110 volt, 50 hertz supply. And we're going to be looking at the phase of our resistor circuit. Then we will know. That VR and IR they are in phase. They are in phase. So when they're using the resistor circuit, ohms law would easily apply, you know, because they are in phase. But then now you notice now we're dealing with an inductive AC circuit. VL leads the current by an angle of 90 degrees. So we cannot say that they are in phase, they are out of phase by 90 degrees. Now, let us move on to our circuit that we have here on the board. Now, as we learn the inductive circuits, an inductor provides an opposition to a change in current. That is what an inductor does. So, the opposition that we're going to be calculating will be given us by the symbol XL, and that is what we refer to as inductive reaction. So this is inductive reactance. An inductive reactance is XL is equal to 2 pi FL. 2 pi FL. Now the unit of measurement for that is the whole. That is the unit of measurement. It's the whole. Very important that we pay our attention to this. So if we're going to be calculating the inductive reactance for this circuit, then XL would be equal to 2 pi, and what is F? F is 50 hertz. So 2 pi times 50 times L, which is what? 10 million anyway, which is 10 times 10 to the negative 3. Well, the unit of measurement for this would be the whole. So we don't have to concern ourselves with the units at this time. So we don't have to say that it is hertz, or we're going to be talking about Henry. You know, because we know that when we calculate this, we're going to be getting it in whole. So that will give us you know, 3.1 
for it to hold. That is what we would have now for our inductive reactants. Now this is the only opposition that is taking place in the circuit. XL. XL is the only opposition that is taking place. So you could easily go now and you could actually find you know the current I. I would be equal to what? Your V supply over what? XL and that would know something that is very easy for you to work on. But let us now move on to a little bit more advanced circuit. Let us say we had more components in this circuit. Okay, so now we have a more complex circuit. So let us label our circuit. This is L, this is R. That is our resistance. We have our source here, which would be our Vs. Now let us put in some values. Let us say this is 100 volts and it is now a 60 hertz supply. 60 hertz supply. Now, a lot of you might be wondering, sometimes there is a 50, sometimes there is a 60 hertz. Now, this is the frequency we're talking about. In Jamaica, we actually produce our electricity at 50 hertz. That means all our generators on the island, the one at Gold, the one at, you know, the hydro plant over Ocherius, we have the solar plant over, you know, Clarendon, we have over Manchester, St. Elizabeth, or Wind Farm, all of those generators are locked at 50 hertz. So in the States, like in the US, in England, they actually have a 60 hertz cycle. All right? We well, don't need to be you know, flustered with that. So we have 100 volts, 60 hertz cycle. Now let us say, students, that we have 10 Henry and we have you know a resistor which is 25 ohm. Alright? So that is what we have in our circuit at this time. Now in terms of our opposition, the coil that we have our inductor right here, it is providing an opposition. It is opposing a change in current. Our resistor that we have in our circuit right here, it is opposing the movement of electrons. So it is two different oppositions that is taking place right here. One is opposing the change, and one is opposing the what? The movement of electrons. So the inductor doesn't have any problem with the movement of electrons. What it has problem with is the rate of change. That is what is happening. But the resistor is shaping the voltage or limiting the current. So what is the opposition provided by the inductor? That is our inductive reactance XL, that is equal to 2 pi FL. So we could easily calculate that hanging out. Alright then, 2 pi times 60 times 10. What would that be equal to? Let us see if we can work it. So our answer is 3370.4 volts. So it's 770.4 volts. Thank you, Mr. Fraser, Fraser for that. Alright, so that is what our inductive reactance is doing to our circuit. But what about our resistor? Our resistor provides another opposition. So R is equal to um, simply ohms up. What do we get? R is equal to what? V. Well, we have our R right here. So our resistor is providing what? 25 ohms to our circuit. Clear? Now, how do we find the total opposition? Now, that is where we're going to learn a new word. That word is called impedance. What is that word, Mr. Fraser? Impedance. Impedance. So that is impedance. Now, impedance, the symbol for impedance is Z. An impedance refers to the what? The total opposition. Total opposition. That is what impedance refers to. Total opposition. Now how do we find our total opposition? Do we just add these? So we say right then XL and R, we just add them? Well certainly not. If we go back to our phaser data, we can see that we have VL and we have what? VR. So you know this? 
Vm leaves Vr by an angle of what? 90, 90 degrees. So they are out of phase. Yes, so it comes to a hypotenuse, you know, Pythagoras triangle. So if we have on this side, which is our VL, and that will also indicate our XL, and if we have on this side our VR, which will put also indicate our resistor, then what would we have on this side of our triangle? Our hypotenuse, which is going to be our Z. So, in that spectrum, based on our mathematical principles, R squared, R squared plus X squared. And that is how we know about finding our impedance. Alright? So, let us see if we can, you know, work that all together. So, R squared, which will be 10 squared, plus 3,770.4 squared. So, this is 10 squared. Sir, it's a when there is no capacitor in our circuit, Mr. Fraser. Yeah, but zero. So there is no capacitor in our circuit, Mr. Fraser. So do not come in this class with the nonsense. No, sir, I will ask you to call it a circuit. Well, there is no capacitor in our circuit. If we had a capacitor in our circuit, then we make allowance for that in our calculations. But we only deal with what we are being asked to do. We are asked to deal with our RL AC circuit. When we look at the more complex thing, now we can drop a capacitor. But for simplicity, let us see how we can, you know, press on. Great. Yes. So, when we look at it now, we know. 25 squared plus 3770.4 squared. And when you square them out, you get 25 squared equals what? 725 plus 3770.4 squared. It was 14 million, 2015, 916.2. When you add both of them, you get 14 million, 216, 641.2. And the square root of that now, Mr. Green, 3770.496. So this is the total of position. If we now no need to find the current in the circuit, then we can now find the current by doing what? V. Vs, so it will be equal to Vs over Z, which is 100 volts divided by 3,770.496 volts. And that will now give us our current. Mr. Fraser, you're working it out. Yes. Zero point zero two. Zero point zero two amperes zero point zero two amperes all right so let us see if we can sum up some things to help you to understand something we have a total current flowing in a series circuit it which is equal to what zero point zero two amperes now what is our voltage supply our voltage supply is 100 volt but let us look at this through our inductor we have an opposition of what? 3,770, but we have 0 0.02 amperes going to our inductor. So if we should multiply our what? Our current by our opposition, what would we get for VL? Mr. Fraser. Fraser. 754.08. So if we should say VL, it would equal to what? IT times XL, which is 0 0.2. 0 0.02 rather amperes times XL, which is what? 3770.4. We would get 754.08. 54.08. And volts. Well, let us do the same for a resistor. 0 0.02 times 25. So VR is equal to IT times R, which is. 0 0.02 times 25. What do we get? 0 0.5. volts. So, a person might look at this and say, well, this doesn't make any sense. Because we have a supply of 100 volts. So how come we have 
754 votes being dropped across right now. It makes no sense. You follow me? But you need to remember, Mr. Freedom, that VL is out of phase. 990 degrees. So where would be our VS? Our VS is at some angle between our VR and our VL. And that is what explains, ladies and gentlemen, you know why our drawing is like this. Now, Mr. Fraser, we're going to be putting some samples in the group for you all. I want you to be practicing your Excel. I want you to be practicing your impedance formula. On Friday, what we're going to be doing? Monday, sir. Okay. On Monday, that's when we have class again. We're going to be adding a capacitor to that. But before we add a capacitor to it, we want to speak a little bit about capacitors in DC circuits. And then we can talk about capacitors in AC circuits. And we can add a capacitor to this. So have fun. Keep ourselves safe during the COVID period.